Welcome back, construction crew, in OSHA 30 Study Guide, the ultimate source for exam preparation. Ever wondered how skyscrapers and bridges are built? It all starts with welding and cutting. But with such powerful tools, safety is paramount. Let's explore the world of welding and cutting in Module 11 and learn how to do it safely. Here is the recap, basic and power tools, and other safety considerations. Every tool is a potential hazard if not used. OSHA emphasizes the following key practices for safe tool usage. Here are the, the dangers of power tools or flammable environments. Inspect tools thoroughly before use. Specific guarding requirements. First, overhead horizontal belts and chains. All right, let's ensure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you never miss a safety lesson. In this module, we'll explore the two most common types of welding and cutting, their associated hazards, and essential safety measures to prevent injuries. Let's start Chapter 1, Gas Welding and Cutting Understanding the Importance of Cylinder Safety. Gas welding and cutting operations rely heavily on compressed gas cylinders, which store highly flammable and pressurized gases. While these cylinders make welding and cutting possible, but improper handling can turn them into dangerous projectiles. So let's break it down step by step. First, transporting gas cylinders safely. It might seem like routine work, but there are essential precautions to follow to avoid accidents. Let's look at some specific safety measures. Valve protection caps. Always ensure valve protection caps are in place and properly secured. This cap prevents accidental release of gas, which could turn the cylinder into a projectile. No magnets or choker slings. Never hoist cylinders using magnets or choker slings. This could destabilize them, increasing the risk of accidents. Instead, cylinders should be hoisted only when secured in a cradle, slingboard, or pallet. Rolling, not dropping. Cylinders should always be tilted and rolled on their bottom edge, never dropped or struck. Even a small drop could damage the valve, causing an unintended release of gas. Once the cylinders are on site, proper placement is key to ensuring safety during operations. Distance from hot work. Always keep cylinders away from cutting operations. Hot slag or flames could ignite the gas inside. Fire-resistant shields. If keeping a safe distance isn't practical, use fire-resistant shields to protect the cylinders. Avoiding electric circuits. Cylinders should never be part of an electrical circuit. Accidental sparks or overheating could cause a fire or explosion. Confined spaces caution. Never take oxygen or fuel gas cylinders into confined spaces. These areas can quickly fill with dangerous gases or become oxygen deprived, leading to suffocation or fire hazards. Storage is just as critical as transportation. Here are a few key rules for keeping your cylinder safe when not in use. No rollers or supports. Never use cylinders as rollers or supports during other tasks. Inspect for damage. Before each use, inspect the cylinders for dents, leaks, or corrosion. Damaged cylinders should be removed from service immediately. Gas mixing. Mixing gases should only be done by qualified gas suppliers. Never attempt to mix gases yourself, it's highly dangerous. Cylinder ownership. Only the cylinder's owner or an authorized person should refill the gas cylinder. In conclusion, the safe handling of gas cylinders is a vital part of welding and cutting operations. By following these guidelines, proper transport, placement, and storage, you can significantly reduce the risk of accidents and ensure a safer work environment. Now, let's consider these questions and discuss with your team.
Good work. Now on to Chapter 2, Arc Welding Equipment Safety. Arc welding is a highly effective process, but without proper equipment handling, it poses significant hazards. Let's dive into the best practices for keeping the workplace safe. Manual electrode holders are critical to the arc welding process, as they conduct electrical current to the welding rod. However, safety starts with ensuring the proper handling of these tools. Current Handling Capacity Always use an electrode holder that can handle the maximum rated current. If the holder cannot accommodate the current, it can overheat, leading to sparking or even fires. Use approved electrodes. Only electrodes specifically designed for arc welding should be used. Non-approved electrodes may not properly handle voltage or current, creating dangerous sparks or shorts. Insulated holders. Ensure every part of the electrode holder carrying current is insulated. Insulation protects against electrical shock and prevents contact with live parts never operate with damaged insulation. Welding cables and connectors are the lifeblood of your arc welding system. Let's look at the key safety measures to ensure they are handled properly. Total insulation. All arc welding cables must be fully insulated. This prevents current from leaking, which could cause electrical shocks, fires, or damage to the system. Flexible cables. Welding cables must be flexible for easy maneuvering. This reduces the chance of cable strain or damage that could expose wires. Current capacity. Ensure that the cables can handle the required current for your welding job. Cables that are too small for the current will heat up, risking burns or fire. Always check the cable rating before beginning. Avoiding cable repairs near the electrode holder. The section of welding cable closest to the electrode holder is under the most stress during operation. Maintaining the integrity of this part of the cable is vital. No repairs near the holder. Keep cables in pristine condition for at least 10 feet from the electrode holder. Splices or repairs close to the holder can compromise insulation and lead to electrical hazards. High stress area. Cables near the holder face the most wear and tear, so even small issues here can result in electrical failure. This is why keeping this part free of repairs is critical to maintaining safety. Finally, let's discuss the correct practices for safely connecting welding cables. First, insulated connectors. Only use connectors that are fully insulated and rated to handle the same current as the cables, this reduces the risk of short circuits and sparks. Then, secure lug installation. When using cable lugs to make connections, ensure they are securely fastened and insulated. Exposed metal can come into contact with other objects, causing sparks or short circuits, leading to potential fire hazards. By following these best practices for handling electrodes, cables, and connectors, you help ensure a safe working environment, proper insulation, current capacity, and cable maintenance are essential to preventing accidents and keeping operations running smoothly. Now, let's consider these questions and discuss with your team. Now, Chapter 3, Fire Prevention During Welding and Cutting. For in-depth knowledge about fire safety practices, check out Module 8. Let's move to the final Chapter 4, The Importance of Proper Ventilation. Managing the environment and air quality around you is key to protecting yourself and others from harmful fumes and gases. Let's explore why ventilation matters and the systems used to keep your work environment safe. Mechanical Ventilation In welding, you need to keep the air clear of dangerous fumes and smoke. There are two primary methods of mechanical ventilation. General Exhaust Ventilation 
This system works by exchanging the air in the space enough times to keep fumes and gases within safe limits. It pulls harmful gases and smoke from the entire area and replaces it with fresh, clean air. Local Exhaust Ventilation This method captures fumes and smoke directly at the welding spot. A hood is placed near the welding operation to remove contaminants before they spread into the air. Once removed, the contaminated air is released into an open area, far from fresh air intakes, to avoid recontaminating the workspace. Both systems are critical in ensuring workers are not exposed to dangerous levels of toxic fumes. In some cases, standard ventilation isn't enough. When working with hazardous metals, extra precautions are required. Lead, cadmium, and mercury. When welding or cutting metals coated with or containing these elements, it is essential to use airline respirators in confined spaces. Standard ventilation systems won't provide enough protection in these situations. Beryllium. This is one of the most dangerous metals to work with, Welding with beryllium-based materials requires not only airline respirators but also strict local exhaust ventilation to ensure fumes don't spread. By using the correct type of ventilation, whether general or local, and taking extra precautions with hazardous metals, you can protect yourself from the harmful effects of toxic fumes. Now, let's consider these questions and discuss with your team. That's it for Module 11. Remember safety starts with you. Here is quiz link in the description to help you prepare for final exams. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to help. Stay tuned for the next module, where we'll tackle a whole new set of safety challenges. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to OSHA Outreach Courses.